Hola, hola. Welcome to the Breakthrough Brand Show. I'm Fabi Paolini, and my mission on this podcast is to give you the behind-the-scenes stories, anecdotes, and unique perspectives behind building a premium brand that makes a real impact. I believe that when you create a message that is aligned with your truth, you can have the breakthroughs that changes lives. Each week, me and my guests share with you how we're making an impact with our message and the stories behind our success. So that being said, let's dive into today's episode. Well, I am so excited today to welcome Adora Winquist, who is a visionary in the area of quantum alchemy. How cool is that? An evolutionary transformative path for self-mastery, which facilitates healing at the DNA level. I'm so excited to have you here, Adora. Tell us in your own words, a little bit about who you are and what you do. Oh, well, thank you so much, Fabi. It's such a pleasure to be here with you today. Uh, So essentially, I am a healer, and I am a seeker, and I am an author, and teacher and entrepreneur and have been for about a little over 25 years now in the field of complemented complementary medicine and specifically essential oils and energy healing so my work is um, intertwined esoteric philosophy from a lot of my experiences and travels around the world, immersion in Rosicrucian philosophy um, and ancient mystical teachings, along with psycho-spiritual dynamics that came from my uh, education at the Barbara Brennan School of Healing, which is the premier school for, four-year school for energy medicine, vibrational healing around the world. And then, of course, my great passion for plants, for essential oils in particular, which are the most potent form of plant medicine and have been such allies in my healing journey through the years. Wow, that is amazing and so interesting. You know, I've I've used a little bit of essential oils, um, especially I have three kids and one the little one has been sick. I mean, not, you know, just colds and viruses and everything. So we've been turning to essential oils to help everybody recover faster. And I really feel like there's something so powerful there and something that so many people don't really, and including myself, if I'm being honest, like know how to really use it. Can you just, and now this is now for my own personal curiosity, tell me a little bit more, because I'm actually really curious about how this works or like what your belief around it is. Sure, absolutely. I mean, it's such a passion of mine, specifically because of my own healing journey. So when I was Mm -hmm. young, I would get bronchitis many, many, many times a year. And when I turned 18 and went to live on my own, I didn't have health insurance and I didn't have a lot of money, but I did hear about herbs. And I went out and bought a book and five different herbs and made a tea and healed so incredibly well. In fact, that recipe, I've had so many requests for it. It's in my DNA healing book. Um, because so many of us experience, especially winter here, uh, respiratory challenges, but it brought me to start making medicine for myself and my family and my friends. And then eventually by request, um, for anything from colds or circulation or aphrodisiacs, or even to clear energy and accelerate our spiritual growth. So of course, I went from working with the herbs to working with the essential oils because they are the most potent form of the plant. And so they are these tiny, you know, you get these small bottles if you're Mm -hmm. using an individual essential oil and it's by the drop. But each drop of the essential oil contains a whole host of chemical constituents, sometimes 200, even 300 different chemical components, like in rose essential oil, which makes Mm -hmm. it so difficult to replicate in a lab, even though that's most commonly done with rose oil. But my point to that is that they are biochemically active and they also contain the quintessence of the plant, the vibrational imprint, which makes them a medicine that is so profound for our holistic well being. So when we talk about um, immune, right, supporting mm-hmm. the immune system, stimulating the immune system and recovering more quickly from um, different ailments. Uh, One of my most popular formulas is called Viral Warrior because Mm -hmm. it has some of the most potent antiviral Mm -hmm. 
antimicrobial and antibacterial essential oils in the world. Some of them that were even used at the time of the Black Death and the plague because of their powerful medicine, um, oils like cinnamon and clove. And this particular formula also has ginger and lemon. Mm -hmm. In fact, I have a formula on my website on the blog that people that want to make their own medicine for just what you're talking about mm -hmm. can go mm -hmm. ahead and make the, that particular formula. Although I do say that because some of those oils are so potent, we want to use them in the right context, especially with children. Nice. And especially when we consider putting them on the skin, just because something is natural doesn't mean that it's safe to use um, in that way. And with essential oils, less is always more. So um, from that perspective, you always want to dilute them before you put them on the skin. And again, there's some wonderful free articles on the website where all of your listeners can go and not only find out about some of these basics on safety and formulation, but some great recipes as well. So I certainly in, invite uh, you to that. do so, but with a, with the children, because I too, I have two uh, 13 and eight year old girls. And so I like to use the soles of the feet um, for essential oils for around this time of the year with supporting immunity because the feet, if you've ever done the experiment where you've taken a clove of garlic, peeled it, and then rubbed it on the sole of your foot, and less than a minute later, you can taste it on your breath, right? Mm. Have you tried that? No. It's kind of a, a nerdy thing to do. It's fun though, <laughs> if you want to give it a go. But what that shows you is how the oil from the garlic enters the bloodstream mm -hmm. through the feet. So from the essential oil perspective, they will offer their phytonutrients, their biochemical activity, whether that is uh, antiviral, antibacterial, mm -hmm. anti-inflammatory right? Analgesic. Um, some are even slightly antidepressant like orange. Great for this time of the year for those of us that are missing the sun, mm -hmm. depending on where we live. Uh, but this is just a snippet of some wonderful ways that you can begin to become curious about essential oils and how they can be used in your home. Or what I, I like to that. say, your aromatic arsenal. I love that. Okay. So Obviously, essential oils and plant medicine um, is a big part of what you do, but there's more. I want to hear a little bit more about retreats because, as I understand, that's another really big and important part of what it is that you do. Mm -hmm. It absolutely is. There is so much power in healing and transformation and elevation that comes when we come together. Um, so I have a beautiful two days of uh, programs in Malibu this May, and they are two exclusive events, one on sacred relationship. And it's really about how do we cultivate unity for longevity? Mm -hmm. right? We know how easy it is in the beginning of a relationship. We got the dopamine rush that lasts a, cu a couple of years if we're lucky, but what happens after that phase? How do we deepen our communication? Uh, our commitment and our intimacy with each other through time. So that retreat is also going to be co-facilitated by my colleague, Sean Christian, who is a creative mindset coach and actor in Los Angeles. And he's wonderful. And we have this beautiful connection between the feminine energies and the masculine. And this is so important. And regardless of our gender, we, we all have an individual uh, aspect of the feminine and masculine within us. And so when we start to look at aspects like our love language, our attachment styles, soul psychology, and then of course, how we can use the alchemies like essential oils mm -hmm. and different vibration techniques or mindfulness techniques to be able to heal from our past patterns of heartache, because we all have them, and open up to a deeper, more meaningful experience of being in relationship for longevity. And so we have that program planned for January, and there were some really horrific storms in the Malibu and Montecito area. So we had to reschedule and we had so many people that said, well, this is really great for those of us that are in couples, but what about those of us that are looking to find our soulmate? 
And so we created a second day for those that are looking to manifest their soulmate to create a map to the one. And so that's going to be a beautiful experience of, again, really starting to understand our past patterns of love, of being in relationship, what our needs are, especially from a place of healthiness, honoring, right? Sacred Mm -hmm. connection. And of course, what does our primary relationship start with? It starts with the relationship with ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we'll be working within that journey of psycho spiritual aspects and the alchemies um, and wonderful ceremony to craft that map for every individual to get clear on all of those characteristics that they want their soulmate to embody. And then we'll be doing ceremony to bless that and to honor that and really call that in. So I love these that. Are some of my favorite areas. And in mm-hmm. fact, you know, with all of the facets of my work, um, it's the energy of love that's woven through all of it. And that's why the um, mission for the Soul Institute is evolving consciousness through the frequency of love. Because every journey comes back to that one, right? And it comes back to our hearts. It comes back to the journey inward to love ourselves and take those um, leaps of faith to deepen our compassion, our practices of self-care, self-honoring, self-acceptance, self-forgiveness. So we can be into the change we wish to see in the world. I love that. You know, it's so funny because as I'm hearing you talk about these things, I can't help but feel like there's such a strong correlation between what you're talking about in terms of attracting relationships to what I focus on, which is attracting clients into your business, right? And at the end of the day, you know, I can go in and help people with messaging and with branding and with how you communicate and what do you say and marketing and funnels and stuff, like all these different things. But if I'm being brutally honest, what's really going to make a difference in the level of clients or how many clients you attract or how much money you make really has to come, comes down to your self-love, like how much certainty you have in yourself and how much you're showing up for your clients and, and for yourself and like how much value you believe that you're delivering in the world. Because there's people that are like, you know, have all of the credentials in the world, but still feel like it's not enough. And then there's people that have zero credentials and they feel like it's more than enough. And at the end of the day, what sells is your belief in yourself, whether you have little knowledge or credibility, quote unquote, right? I mean, at the end of the day, who can determine that? Or a lot, it's really about that love. So can you add to that? (laughs) Do you agree with what I'm saying? Well, I love that because it's so true. Mm -hmm. And really that is the heart of the mission of the Soul Institute, Mm -hmm. whether it's through our aromatherapy products, our in-person retreats. I didn't even get to tell you about our yearly excursion to France, which is in on Cryob. Um, or even the love frequency program, which is our latest year long program, everything comes back to how we care for ourselves, because Mm -hmm. how we care for ourselves, how we love ourselves, how we're kind, gentle and compassionate is the way that we treat everyone and everything around us. Right. And so the, the vision that I have for the soul Institute is to awaken and activate over 25 million individuals to embody their soul purpose and thrive. And this is the way, right? Mm -hmm. The way is through the heart. The way forward is through our hearts and the journey starts with ourselves. I love that. Well, can you tell me a little bit about how through the soul Institute you approach branding and messaging for your own business and what impact it has had on your own success? Oh, that's such a big one. I know. (laughs) First of all, I love um, the idea of creating something from nothing. Mm -hmm. I love the idea of branding with whether it's, you know, creating the product, the formulas, the packaging, Um, our logo. Um, This venture of the Soul Institute is relatively new. In fact, about two years ago, I started my latest brand, which was Adora Winquist. And then in August, we rebranded to the Soul Institute. Before that, I started with a 
another collection of formulas that blends potions that I was making many, many years ago and built that, um, even going so far as to making a lot of the products on a tiny TV table in a small apartment in New mm -hmm. Jersey when my first daughter was just a few months old and then taking them and selling to places like Whole Foods in Manhattan and New Jersey and Connecticut. And, and so what, it, what do you have to do for that, right? It's wonderful mm -hmm. to have an idea. And, and so many of us do, right? And so, so the creation of the concept, whether it's the brand, whether it's a tangible product mm -hmm. or a course is one thing. And that's an enormous thing, right? It takes an enormous amount of creativity, of resources, of clarity, of commitment to execute an idea. But once you have created something, that's not the end of the road, right? You have to build a world for it to be able to grow and thrive in. And I think that that's such an important part. Now, the previous business that I mentioned went through many, many different iterations, right. um, brand names, logos, more packaging than I can tell you mm -hmm. before I was able to turn it into a national brand with international play with many awards from packaging to some of my very early formulations and then eventually brought on a team and then sold that company. But what does it take to do that, right? It's not just the passion. It's not just the creative fire. It is the perseverance. It is having the right people in the right places because you know that you're not the best at everything, right? I know some areas I'm not excellent at design work. And yet the cover of my first book um, was named a top uh, coffee table book for 2022 with other books like uh, Chanel book, Tom Ford and Rolling Stones. And why is that? It's because I had the right person in the right place to create right. a beautiful world-class design. So, so those are some of the elements that to me are um, not only uh, fun in the creation, but uh, crucial for a successful brand to be able to grow and thrive with the times. I love that. Yes. And I absolutely, obviously agree. I think that we just need to find the people that are going to get us to where we want to get faster. And I think that it yes. really comes down to focusing on the payoff, not the payments, right? Sometimes we're like, oh, but I, yeah, but I mean, think about where this is going to get you when you're able to get support around these different things. So I love that. Okay. So I have one last question I want to ask you. Um, and I think, I mean, I'm going to rephrase it for you because I think that kind of, we've been kind of covering it throughout the episode anyways, but for me personally, personal development has been really important and mindset work and spiritual work has been really important in my own growth as an entrepreneur, because as you know, there's so many challenges that we face. There's so many obstacles. And I feel like having personal development or having something to believe in or working on our mindset is so important to help us through those challenges. So I'm, I want to hear from you what that has meant for you. Mm. And then what is your go-to your favorite, I'm going to say favorite, because I feel like you probably have more than one, but your favorite go-to strategy to help you kind of snap back when you're facing mm -hmm. an obstacle or a challenge to raise your vibration again. <laughs> yes. Oh, I love this question. Well, and because for me, when I started my first business back in 1998, my first product business, I also started my first healing practice, right? Mm -hmm. As a healer, a spiritual counselor and intuitive. So this has poised me with a very unique perspective because I didn't have a business background, right? I didn't come from business school. I, you know, I didn't come from a family of entrepreneurs. I just knew I had something within me that had to come out and be created and be shared. Um, so the truth is that the journey of the entrepreneur is absolutely a spiritual journey. And for those of us that say, well, no, you know, business, personal, they're, they're two very different things. This is um, hmm. everything is connected. Yeah. Right. 
everything is connected. And so there is bleed through, there is interplay, there is interchange there. And, and when we're in our highest capacity, there's a symbiotic flow between our work and our personal lives. Um, and for me, with so many challenges through building a business from the ground up with really, you know, not um, many resources, um, we know from the entrepreneurial perspective that there are so many times we have to pivot, mm -hmm. that we have to hear the word no, maybe a million times and keep going until the answer is yes. Exactly. So we have to pick ourselves up off of the ground. <laughs> and sometimes when we're down on it, on our hands and knees, because we feel like we've reached the end hmm. of our capacity. Exactly. But, but there's always more. And the more that we can open ourselves to our own inner evolutionary process of personal development and growth at looking at the areas that we have that are strengths and some areas that we need development and allow ourselves to receive the support from others, that is a big one to, to know that you don't know everything and that it's okay to ask for help because you'll never get to where you want to be by yourself. It doesn't happen. I love that. That's so powerful. And so it's all of the ways that we continue to take off our blinders mm -hmm. to see the bigger picture in each and every moment. But I do have three steps that I recommend. Okay. And so you're any of your listeners anywhere can do this. And so these are from my love frequency program. It's actually called the um, love code sequence mm -hmm. and it's a breathing sequence. Mm -hmm. And so all you need is the presence of your mind, the power of your intention, right? Which is so key, right? When we can engage our mind, when we can engage in our positive intentionality for transformation, which means learning how to catch ourselves where, when we're in the midst of freaking out that mm -hmm. emotional reaction, right? When exactly. we get triggered from an email or a phone or like the huge to-do list or what, you know, a million other things that it could be in the moment. So the three steps are release, forgiveness, and gratitude. Okay. And so in the moment when we start to feel overwhelmed, angry, or down, like, oh, I just don't think I can go on anymore. Or this person, I might just, you know, <laughs> Right. <laughs> or when we really, and we don't talk about this as much, but typically the person that we get most frustrated with is who? Ourselves. Ourselves. Yeah. yeah. But we don't like to go there. So it's always easy to blame on someone or something else. So when we can bring the presence back in through our breath, connect in with the earth, connect in with the sky above and breathe into the heart. Right. And this is a way that we can reduce anxiety. We can deepen our breath and just hold the intention that through our breath, we just let go of whatever the dot, dot, dot is. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the three breaths, the more we practice it, the quicker it shifts, the quicker we shift. And then the next breath is a breath of gratitude. I mean, a breath of forgiveness, forgiveness right? because we right. want to connect and say, we're not perfect. I'm not going to be perfect. You're not going to be perfect. Everything around us is not going to be perfect most mm -hmm. of the time, 99.5% of the time. Exactly. So breathing in that breath of forgiveness to the self, you know, it doesn't have to be about anyone in particular. It can just be an energy of forgiveness because the energy of forgiveness is like a healing bomb. It paves the way for grace. And grace brings tremendous solace, comfort, mm. and ease. And then the last breath is a breath of gratitude, right? Because gratitude for in each moment that we're growing, that we're shifting, in each moment we have the opportunity to do better, make a better choice, to feel kinder, more gentle, more loving with ourselves and others, to be more patient with ourselves first. Right. So that gratitude is such a high frequency. And when we can breathe that into our heart space, it shifts our whole magnetic point of attraction with the universe. Wow. That's amazing. I'm definitely, it's so funny because I just mentioned that I hired a coach. Um, and literally this week, 
I had my call with her. And in the beginning of the call, the first thing she had me do is let's breathe into your heart. Um, so I love that you're, you're saying that. Um, and it's so true. And it's, it's so, so simple, true. but we're like, ah, I have to do all these things. No, but come on, calm, calm down, take it easy. Let's just breathe for a moment, breathe the release and forgiveness and gratitude. And that's just going to make all the difference. That was amazing, Adora. Thank you. Well, where can people find you? Um, Where can they get more information about you and the work that you do? Sure. Well, of course, would love to have any of you and even you, Fabi, join us at our wonderful retreats this year. Um, You can find out all about that and more at the soulinstitute.co or you can just type in my name, adorawinquist.com. That will work too. Perfect. Um, But we have information about all the ways that you can engage with our quantum community because there are many free ways, free meditations, content from our alchemy library, wonderful inspiration from past podcasts, like your beautiful podcast program, as well as other articles on the blog. So there's so many ways that you can join. You can join our Facebook group at the Quantum Community. And I would love to see you all in person at an upcoming event. We also have a a number of events in California, book signings and some other um, events too, an event in San Diego on Mary Magdalene that will be wonderful in May. Amazing. I love it. Well, thank you so much for coming on our show today. It was amazing having you here, Adora. (laughs) Thank you so much. Blessings. Gracias for listening to today's episode of the Breakthrough Brand Show. To listen to more episodes or to be featured as a guest, go to fabipaulini.com slash podcast for more details. Can I ask you for something? If you got value out of this episode, would you share it on social media? Just do a quick screenshot with your phone and text it to a friend or just post it online. If you know somebody that would be a great guest, tag them on social media to let me know about the show and include the hashtag Breakthrough Brand Show. I love seeing your posts and guest suggestions. We're regularly putting out new episodes and content. To make sure that you don't miss any episode, go ahead and subscribe right now. Your thumbs up, rating, amor, love, and reviews go a long way to help promote the show and mean so much to me and my team. Want to know more? Go to our website, fabipaulini.com, or follow me everywhere as Fabi Paulini. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you next time. Con amor, Fabi.